Well, there, we didn't have the audio on. The audio button wasn't on, folks. Welcome to Stay Curious. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad that you're staying curious as we're figuring things out. Marty Winkle, my cameraman, co-producer, and man behind the Streamlabs computer there. We had a little technical issues this morning, but that's okay. We got things going there, and I didn't check the mic. But look at this gorgeous Saturn V rocket taking off. That is Apollo 14 headed to the moon on this date in space history. It was launched January 31st, 1971 to go to Fra Mero, where Apollo 13 was headed a year and a half earlier. But this uh, four in the afternoon launch, I believe, was an interesting flight with these astronauts. No, we're not going to have those astronauts yet. I wanted to show you the... The screen back there, or white screen of the launch there. I've actually got my Apollo 13 shirt on. Nobody does a logo better than Grumman. Look at that beautiful Grumman logo on my arm there. They just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 13 mission, 52 years almost to the day in April when uh, we had that near fatal disaster. But we're here to talk about some space history. We've got an interesting mix of the month of shuttles for February. We've got 11 shuttles launched in February, three of them today, February 3rd. So we're going to talk about those, and what we're going to kick off today's space history with a little bit of Russian space history. We're on this date, on February 3rd, 1966, Luna 9 soft landed on the moon. That's the petal-shaped object in the foreground here in this artist rendering. In the background is the actual vehicle that had the thruster on it to slow it down and just as it was about to crash it popped off this ball about the size of a basketball that rolled and bounced on the, the lunar surface and then these pedals opened up flipped it over very ingenious designed to flip it open so the antenna would c communicate with earth and it took the first photographs ever taken by a vehicle on the surface of an alien world there's one of them right there from luna 9 56 years ago in 1966, landing in an area called Merkrisium, the Sea of Crisis. So, you know, good space history. Russia has a lot of firsts. Their technique was crude and hardcore built to last things. This did not soft land. It actually bounced a few times on the moon. When it opened up, it scattered a bunch of other balls that were metallic balls that that like a jigsaw puzzle. When they came apart, it was uh, little pieces of CCCP, the S uh, Soviet Socialist Republic flag. Those are on the moon for scavengers to get someday. But headed to the moon for the third landing, third attempted landing, were these astronauts in the middle, American hero, Alan Shepard, with 15 minutes of suborbital flight to his name. Stu Roses, the redhead Man there in the middle there, he was the command module pilot that orbited the moon when they arrived there on February 4th. And uh, Edgar Mitchell there on the right-hand side was the other moonwalker, a rookie. 15 minutes of suborbital flight between these three gentlemen, and yet Alan Shepard landed almost a pinpoint landing, the closest of all the six landings, 150 feet from his target there. And uh, walked in here to our, our wonderful studios is our former mayor, Jim Tully. Hi, Jim. Hello. And he, uh, you remember Edgar Mitchell, friend of the museum here for many years. He's also a shuttle worker. He's also a shuttle worker. I was going to say Jim's, Jim's a shuttle <laughs> worker. And we're going to have him on a program to talk about spacehonors.org. If you're a space worker, you want to go to spacehonors.org. Put your, your biography up there, what you did, some photos. It's your own little biography page to your career to space, either wherever space center you worked at. So, Jim, we'll look forward to having you on the show here in a couple of weeks. Thank you. He was the mayor from 2009 to about 2016. And uh, his insight into the end of the shuttle era and how, how things have come back since then will be be a good thing to have on Stay Curious. Keep me curious. Anyway, those guys were on the way to the moon 50, uh, uh, 51 years ago. It was 1971. There is them 
practicing, one of them, well, that would have been the commander because they decided to put stripes on the shoulders and the knees, and they also put it on the helmet down the middle of the commander so you could distinguish who is who because they had to ask the astronauts on 12 because both of them had cameras, which one's which, who's doing what. And so that was an easy way for them to tell who is who, particularly on the videos that they brought back. But there they are, Marty. That looks just like off A1A, you know, with uh, the hotels in the background, and they're out on the beach pulling a little uh, uh, rickshaw is what they used on Apollo 14. Here is the annual pre-flight breakfast, not annual, the traditional pre-flight breakfast in the Alan Shepard's way on the far end there. Uh, the backup astronauts, uh, uh, Ron Evans on the right, the bald gentleman, is one of the backups, and I see Tom Stafford there. Uh, you've got Ed Mitchell there, the first man on the left. They're eating steak. Uh, in fact, the astronaut uh, in the middle there has uh, got an A1 steak sauce. He's, he's uh, twisting off. There's the beautiful launch that we have on our background behind here, uh, a, a beautiful Saturn V launch. Uh, we had on Space History yesterday that in 1959 they changed the name from Juno 5 to Saturn 5, and it had 13, uh, not flawless, but 13 successful missions. Every launch of a Saturn 5 rocket, the mightiest rocket ever built. We can't wait to see the Space Launch System rocket go out to pad 39B here in a couple weeks, and we'll definitely hit, show you pictures of that when that happens. But every month, we're going to highlight at the beginning of the month the shuttles of that month. We have 11 shuttles of February, and I'm going to have former NASA uh, Public Relations Director and the voice of NASA, Hugh Harris, on our show at the beginning of every month. He's going to come on next Tuesday and talk about 41B, one that he was involved with, and a couple others here as we go through space history. There's the dates, and look, three of them launched. On this date, February 3rd, STS-41B, STS-60 and 63. We'll tell you about those missions in a minute. Uh, STS-98 and 122, though years apart, were on uh, February 7th. I need to put the years on there, Marty. That's what I didn't on my, my, uh, my little meme there, meme. And then we've got the rest of them throughout. And yes, we've got one on the last day of the month, STS-36, a Department of Defense mission. Shuttles of February. And to help us with our annual, our, our monthly look at shuttles of February, are the USIAC brothers. Tom and Mark have offered their photography along with some of their other friends. And uh, we'll look at the, their, some of those pictures in a minute. You know, art is a big part of NASA. The A in STEAM education is art or astronomy or agriculture or aerospace or aeronautics. All right, a lot of things can be that A. But it basically stands for art because art like this is important in the space program, as well as concept drawings of the early shuttle. Uh, it was the great administrator, James Webb, that brought the first true artist to the launch pad to see Gordon Cooper's launch of MA-9, Mercury Atlas 9, and that had been 1963, I believe it was May, and among those was the great Paul Kelly, a the only man sketch artist that was in the, uh, um, the suit room when the Apollo 11 astronauts were getting suited up. That's depicted very well in the movie First Man. Uh, with him sketching the art, the astronauts getting their suits on, and the artist is played by his son, Chris Kelly, in the movie. Hi, Chris, hope you're watching. And the American Space Museum is talking to the Callies about partnering them to have a new art award, so stay tuned for that. But the art here shows the shuttle, of course, and on the far right is a astronaut on the manned maneuvering unit, flying free in space. This was the first mission, the first time that we ever did this, and it was Bruce McCandless on this 1984 mission. He got on this backpack called the manned maneuvering unit, the MMU, and you've seen the famous pictures of him all by himself, a satellite all his own orbiting the Earth on the manned maneuvering unit. And then... Uh, Robert Stewart took his turn and was the second man to do it on this same mission. And over on the left is the ignition of what is called the 
pay payload assist motor that were solid rocket motors that would put a satellite into a specific orbit. And it, uh, this mission launched two satellites out of its payload bay for paying customers. So it had other in interesting uh, features on there, but this was er uh, other experiments on there, but this is early in the days of the space program. And here are all three, all five astronauts in space. All right, Hoot Gibson on the right, he was a pilot. On the left is Vance Brand, who was on the Apollo Soyuz test project and also on uh, an early shuttle flight. This was his final flight. Uh, and uh, Bruce McCandless is uh, uh, the second man on the left. In the middle, there's Robert McN Ronald McNair. This was his successful flight. Of course, Ron lost his life in the Challenger accident. And then, uh, and that's Robert Stewart uh, in the, there in the background, then Hoot Gibson. Here is the glorious launch taken by Tom Usiak. Again, the Usiak brothers launched photographers of more than 70 launches. Uh, and they were also, they started coming down in their teens on Apollo 15 after this Apollo 14 launch behind me here. There's a pretty cool shot, the 25th anniversary of uh, NASA uh, on 1994, uh, the founding of NASA in 1959. And uh, they still got the 25th anniversary uh, label there for some reason. Nine seconds after launch is what that's showing. You see all the other photographers down there. And then Tom zoomed in a little bit with another camera probably. The reflection on the water is nice. Beautiful, beautiful shot there. That is actually with a Hasselblad camera. Marty, look at that shine on the uh, external tank booster all the way up there. That, that's from a very large negative, a high-quality camera lens, and that's the kind of work Tom Usiak does all the time. the external tank booster. Donald Rocket, SRB. SRB, yes. Yeah, the SRB there, I'm noticing how everything's so clear and uh, beautiful. And then this was the first landing at Kennedy Space Center, STS-41B. Uh, uh, in uh, 1984 it landed on february 11th they had a big uh big to do there in the rocket garden uh that was uh, situated uh, uh kind of in the same place it is now and here's the uh oh and i didn't show the landing pictures okay i thought i put the landing pictures in there but i didn't but the first we'll show those on february 11th because mark usiak nailed those the first landing at kennedy space center of course there's more rockets now in the rocket garden and some of you can wax eloquent that I was there when Johnson Kennedy Space Center looked like that in 1984. Next mission we want to celebrate that was rocketed to space on February 3rd. This one, STS-60, was in 1994, 10 years after the, the uh, Challenger mission. This was Discovery. And in the month of February, we have 11 shuttle flights that flew for 106 days, okay, 67 people were launched, only one repeat, and that's Janice Voss, and uh, on this, we had the first untethered flight we talked about, this one had some of first on, on board, it was the first time that um, they had put a Russian on board. Okay, that's what's the first on this. Krikalov is the astronaut on board there. He's in the middle in the back. Uh, the commander is Charles Bolden in the middle. The lady on the left is Jan Davis, her third flight. Okay, on the far right is the fourth flight of Chang, uh, Franklin Chang Diaz, who is the record setter tied with Jerry Ross with seven. Okay, and then you have in the back pilot John Reitler, his second and final flight, and Ron Siga over on the on the right. And how many times did Ron fly? Ron flew, uh, this is his first of two flights. So this was the first joint NASA-Russian Space Agency in-flight medical experiments on Sergei Kirkolev. He This was the first Russian passenger to go up. And this was Kirkolev's uh, third of six flights, and he has the record of third most of anybody uh, behind two other Russians. And uh, he later flew on STS-88 with Commander Bob Cabana and turned the lights on 
on the on the International Space Station uh, once they hooked up the uh, uh, the, the the American section to it in those early days. Here we have the walkout of the crew led by their commander, Charlie Bolden, uh, taken by Mark Usiak on the tarmac as they got out of their T-38 jets. That always had to be exciting. Uh, not There's a horde of news people uh, around uh, this cameraman. And there's a beautiful palm tree shot, making use of the good Florida fauna around here was Tom Usiak on that shot. And this was taken at the launch was at 7 10 a.m so you got your f-stop shop down there a little bit so it looks darker than it really was beautiful takeoff there of the bird discovery pardon me lift off yep <laughs> takeoff and lift off challenger discovery and then discovery again was flown on this date all right in the commander again the the uh, symbolism here is uh, the sunrise over the earth you've got the mere space station in the foreground and this was quite a historic uh, mission it was the first flight of a female shuttle pilot okay there's the launch that tom usiak took uh from uh, uh they know all these sites out there i don't if you're a photographer you'll know exactly where he took that there they are in space. I, I promise I chose high resolution pictures. Sorry, they pixelate out. But there on the left is Bernard Harris, who became the first African American to do a spacewalk. On the right is Michael Fole, who became the first resident of the United Kingdom to do a spacewalk. How about that? Robert Law in Scotland. He's in Dundee, Scotland. He knew that. We want to wish all of our friends out there. Hi, Robert, Hazel Banks, Hope Cliff Watson is watching down in uh, uh, Australia. And uh, Marty's going to give me a couple others. Ophelia, thank you for being such a faithful fan, Ophelia. She's in Normandy, France. Uh, Maggie Mathis, uh, good to see you. And uh, Dave Stang and Christopher Mick, they are probably suffering in that storm, Marty. And we're thinking about, can we golf tomorrow morning? Seriously, am. <laughs> well, we've got the two guys in the front were spacewalkers, and they went outside of the shuttle while it was attached. They weren't attached, all right. They they uh, did a spacewalk later on the space hat. They didn't. They rendezvoused with the Mir space station, but they didn't dock. And the two ladies on board left on the left in the blue. That is um, Janice Voss. Her uh, she was on five space flights. Okay, which one was this for Janice? This was, uh, let me consult the scroll here. Fetch my shuttle scroll. Okay, for Janice, this was her second of five launches. Okay, five launches, and we lost Janice to, to breast cancer a few years back. And the other lady on the other side, you should all recognize her. That's Elaine Collins, the first female pilot. She was a pilot twice and then became the first commander of a spaceship, all right? And then Pam Melroy followed in her footsteps, the only two ladies to pilot and command a spaceship. And, uh, and then, of course, in the back row, there is Vladimir Titov. Titov was the second Russian. Here in February, we launched the first and second Russians to the, uh, on, the, uh, on, on a shuttle. And... Uh, there is uh, Eileen Collins. We saw some pictures of her yesterday. There she is. Very youthful looking, of course, in 1995. 31 years ago. Wow, you hate thinking that, don't you? But uh, what a wonderful lady. A great uh, ambassador for NASA in all she does to inspire uh, not just women. She inspires a lot of men like me to do their best. Here's a nice shot from Carlton Bales. He's a friend of the UCAC brothers. We're going to have Carlton on a show here very soon. He's photographed over 600 launches, mostly unmanned. What a beautiful shot, Marty, of it in the VAB there. Something that you probably saw a few times. And here's a gorgeous shot that Mark UCAC took that we're going to use as a background one day. Uh, uh, just a, a, a gorgeous shot of 
uh, discovery on his pad. It was launched at 12.22 a.m. on February 3rd with a crew of six. Uh, the commander, gee, I don't think I mentioned the commander in that picture. It was Weatherby in the middle. Uh, Got to mention James Weatherby. He flew six times, but five of them is a commander. He's the only shuttle commander five times and once a pilot. And you want to know something, the coolest thing about Jim Weatherby? He's the drummer for the all star, all astronaut band called Max Q. And I've watched videos of him beating the skins, and he's pretty good. He's a pretty big guy, Marty, but he, he, he pounds the heck out of those drums in great rhythm. So the rhythm guy there, James Weatherby. Now, as we wind up our shuttles of, of February here, uh, tomorrow's Friday, and we hope to have Travis Triple T Thompson talk about a few of these missions with us. But he left the building in the middle of a tour today and got diagnosed at a doctor's office with the flu. And I am having a little bout of the cold from standing out in the cold during our astronaut memorial ceremony Saturday. So uh, don't have COVID. In fact, Marty got tested and he uh, for COVID just in case he thinks that I gave it to him. But I got a head cold. It wasn't that. It wasn't that? No. Just a four-hour sleep for eight days. Oh, yeah, day. right. Yeah, he's had four hours sleep for eight days straight. And then we were around the, all the people at the Grumman reunion and the astronaut gathering. And and uh, people weren't that concerned about social distancing. There were a few masks around. But I sure hope Fred Hayes and, and uh, Charlie Duke don't have the cold that I got. So it's not too bad. But still, we're going to tell everyone to to uh, be safe uh, no matter what the uh, uh, what, what's going on uh, you don't want to get a cold flu or covid one more person all right and ishmael jamal al rami thank you ishmael for watching stay curious and we thank everybody who's watching our program on facebook live youtube twitch spotify and we'll have an audio on uh, apple and google and that is all because of the great work that our Trekkie Techie Jessica Galloway does. Thank you, Jessica. I'm going to put my mask back on here uh, so I can walk through our museum again here because I don't want to give anybody my cold. We found a good and a happy way to use our masks here uh, in post-COVID days. So, Marty, thank you for all you do. Thank you, everybody, for embracing our American Space Museum video podcast. Please tell your friends to like us, share us follow us and subscribe to us and until tomorrow we'll be back again with another show i'm mark marquette and join us then to stay curious and bridge the space between us